uh, Brandon Spikes and Cassie Cloverdance. Oh yeah. Uh, are from a company that we've just begun developing a deeper relationship with. And these guys are incredibly smart, are absolutely pushing the limits, and have won some major contracts of designing and delivering uh, rockets. So come on up. <laughs> Um, as Jim said, I am uh, Cassie Cloverdance. I'm Media and Public Relations for Space Exploration Technologies, um, also known as SpaceX. And SpaceX was started in 2002 to provide a solution to space transportation, to provide a reliable and cost-effective way um, to get um, humans and cargo into space. And uh, to do that, um, we, the key to that is reusability. And so if you think about any transportation system, a car or a plane, um, if you had to get rid of it every, every time you used it, it wouldn't be a very cost-effective solution. So SpaceX is uh, actually uh, currently marketing um, reusable launch vehicles that are um, priced at about a half to a third of the current market prices right now. Um, so we are... Uh, we are located uh, here in Hawthorne, California for our headquarters. We, um, uh, as I said, we're founded in 2002 and we have just under 650 employees now, so you can tell we're growing at a very rapid pace. Um, we are not only located here, but we are also have a test facility down in Texas, in Central Texas. We have um, a, a few people out in D.C. for um, our government affairs, and uh, we're very proud to have uh, two launch sites. One is in the Kwajalein Atoll in the Pacific Ocean. <coughs> It is 2,500 miles southwest of Hawaii, and uh, it's very small. The island is so small it can fit into our headquarters building up here. <laughs> um, and uh, we are putting the finishing touches on our launch facility out in um, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, um, getting ready to uh, uh, launch uh, right where the uh, shuttle launches as well. So we're very excited about that. Okay, we have, currently we have um, created two rockets uh, from a clean sheet of paper. Um, and keep this in mind, this started in 2002. We actually make 80% by value of everything that we use um, for launching. That includes ground support equipment, avionics, um, you know, all of the material and hardware that you see there in our own engines, batteries, everything. Um, so we're very excited about that. Um, of our two launch vehicles, Falcon 1 is the smaller of the two. Um, it is used to place small satellites into space. And uh, in uh, September of 2008, uh, we, with the Falcon 1, achieved um, an absolute milestone. Uh, we're the first um, commercial company to put a liquid fuel rocket in Earth orbit. So we're thrilled about that. Um, both of our rockets are two-stage kerosene and liquid oxygen fuel. And uh, Falcon 1 is, will be launching, uh, our fifth launch of that will be out of the Kwajalein Atoll um, in the coming month. The Falcon 9 is a larger of our two rockets, and uh, that was created to put medium and heavy satellites into space. It is also used for our Dragon capsule, which is on the right. Dragon is also a SpaceX piece of hardware. And uh, currently, we have just won a $1.6 billion contract with NASA um, to take 12 flights of cargo to and from the International Space Station. We're hoping in the coming years, um, we're very close to being able to uh, put people inside of our Dragon, and we look forward to transporting people to and from uh, International Space Station. We also have a third form of the Dragon um, called Dragon Lab, which is a orbiting science lab for microgravity experiments. So we're very excited about those, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to Brandon Spikes, our Chief Information Officer, to tell you about how HP is making all this possible. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go back and uh, I'll just you know, tell you, Jim, uh, that's not an elephant, but it might look pretty good on there, too. <laughs> so, uh, you know, this is rocket science, and uh, the demands are not just for great performance, but, um, you know, more importantly for us is the reliability. Uh, and so that's, you know, that's, that's why I feel that we couldn't have done this and got this far without, you know, the partnership with HP and uh, all their great products. Uh, so as a result of that, uh, you know, they're our primary vendor for everything, you know, uh, from printers to servers, you know, workstations, notebooks, and, uh, and virtually every uh, development environment in our company uses the workstation. So uh, it's avionics, structures, uh, you know, all, uh, propulsion, actual engine design, uh, 
Uh, so, you know, the faster and more reliable these boxes are, uh, you know, improves our bottom line. So, uh, you know, the XW series, the last generation, was our standard. Uh, you can see on the, the chart here that uh, his performance, you know, while quite good, it, uh, it, you know, the, the Z series now is 45% is faster. Uh, so in, in real world tests and benchmarks using our, uh, our, our NX CAD application, uh, you know, uh, I'm just I'm very impressed by its performance. And uh, you know, one of the things we really looked at was uh, solid state disks. Uh, wanted to see how much faster it could be if we, uh, you know, invested in those. And so we, uh, you know, actually did some benchmarks and found an additional five percent. Now, you know, solid state disks by themselves are way faster than magnetic disks, but you know, it's not just about the storage in a in a CAD environment. Uh, nonetheless, you know, a five percent increase is still, uh, you know, quite impressive. So, uh, you know, here I've, I've, I've demonstrated our. Our, our simple uh, storage benchmark to see just how much faster the salt state is. Uh, you know, looking at uh, uh, read speed, write speed, seat time, those sorts of things, we found that it was nearly twice as fast as uh, the fastest magnetic disks. Uh, you know, that also, also I think worth mentioning is uh, it makes the machine so much quieter. You know, it's uh, you don't hear the disks uh, seeking around all the time, and uh, you know, which I think is a bit of a distraction. So. Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of the uh, the SSDs and the Z. Uh, oh, actually, I did skip one. Uh, something interesting: the CPU benchmarks that we ran were improved by running SSDs. I don't understand how that could be, uh, but we repeated the tests and actually ran multiple benchmarks and found varying results. But um, you know, sort of interesting, nonetheless. So uh, uh, the Nehalem chip, of course, now has this turbo mode. You know, it's uh, something new, I don't think it existed before, uh, but uh, it's particularly useful for us. Uh, we're using a, a primarily single-threaded CAD application. So uh, what that means is since the, the cores are not all uh, utilized, uh, the one that is being utilized can sort of overclock itself dynamically. So uh, you know, when we did that in our, in our test environment, we found another 8% improvement in performance. So what does all this mean, right? Uh, well, as you can see by this video, uh, it means that our, our developers can get more work done. Uh, uh, more to the point of, you know, what is the hourly cost? So you see on the left here, um, the Z800 with the solid state finish is uh, uh, about 15 minutes of work in about nine minutes time. Uh, and then, you know, right after that, the, the magnetic storage, and then you see the, uh, the, the previous generation XW. So. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think that pretty much tells the story. I, I think that the Z800 is going to definitely replace the XW for us, and it's going to definitely improve our bottom line. Thanks.